Ho! I think today I want to talk a little bit about a photography quote. Now one of the best photography quotes I think in existence is F8 and be there. It's succinct, it just tells you to know your gear, be there, take the picture, and don't worry so much about fiddling with all the settings, just the subject is probably way more important than any little fine detail for the person looking at the photograph is what I get out of that quote. But that's not the quote I want to talk to you today, help, because that's one of my favorites. The quote I want to talk to you about is not one of my favorites. It goes something like this. When you photograph people in color, you photograph their clothes. But when you photograph people in black and white, you photograph their soul! Well, I, I don't think the original quote quite had that spooky connotation on the end of it. That's my own little flair. But anyways, uh, this quote is attributed to Ted Grant, who I'm not familiar with, and... Oh. Okay, so look. When I say that, I don't mean like when you go on a forum and some newish celebrity is starting to build a reputation and then they get some notoriety and then someone who's jealous that they're not getting notoriety is all like, eh, if they're so good, how come I never heard of them? Can you imagine being someone who thinks that you are the gatekeeper of celebrity? Like, like can you imagine like selling like a million albums and like you're on TV and like you're in the green room for Conan and like, <laughs> and it's like Ariana Grande, why are you why are you so sad? She's like, <laughs> this guy Derek Shablowski from Kewanee, Wisconsin hasn't heard of me, therefore I'm nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. What I meant by that statement is I personally am not aware of Ted Grant's photographic legacy. Like, is he well respected and like a master, you know, like one pig below Ansel Adams? Or is he just some creepy guy who like shoots 20 year olds nude all the time and yeah, it's like gross and you shouldn't really listen to anything he says. So um, yeah, before I can continue this video, I need to do some research. All right, Mr. Grant, I got your book. It's time we discover what kind of photography chops you actually have. <laughs> That's an ass. Nice. 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 Okay, I've decided his work is good. I like it. And this book also tells me a little something about the guy that helps bring this whole quote a little more further into perspective. So I think I need to talk first about why I don't like this quote. To me, it just seems like very much like a I don't understand something so your work has no value type quote. Like, ugh, color. It's impossible to do good work in color. Blech. Like, that's, that's the feeling I get from this quote. But me growing up loving the masters of color photography, that seems like an insult. Like, you know. Colors just for shooting product photos or some bullshit. But here's the thing that I discovered in that book. This guy's been around for a long time. Like the pictures cover the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, da da. You know, he's got many, many decades shooting photojournalism under his belt. So a quick little um history lesson for those of you who aren't up to speed on some of photography's artsy history background. See, back in back in the olden days before like the 70s, color photography was not taken seriously as an art form. It's like black and white is art, color is advertisements. I think it was a pretty rigid belief of people at the times. Until sometime I think in the 70s when Ashland, Wisconsin's very own John Sarkowski comes around, gets himself a job at MoMA, and starts giving photographers who shoot in color like big exhibitions in this, you know, number one art museum in the United States. So that's kind of when the whole shift of color photography is now an acceptable photography started to happen. I'm sure there were some fist fights and some good fighting in the publications at the time, but I don't have records of those, so I can't share any of that drama for you. So basically what this tells me is, we are both approaching this quote from two different, like, completely different brains of how photography is accepted in the fine art world. I'm the more modern kid who everything can be art, and he's the more old school, raised in a time when no, just black and white is art. That context of the quote helps me understand why I'm not a fan of it, but, 
you don't come to this channel for like in-depth arguments about the history of actual photography. No, you come here for bullshit. And that's why I'm gonna look at this quote from a very, very hyper-literal angle and just yell about it because yelling at stuff that doesn't matter it just feels good and makes me feel happier. So here we go. You photograph a person in color. You photograph their clothes. Let's look at a portrait I took a few years ago. Impromptuly shot when this guy Bud came up to me and was like, nice camera. How would you title this portrait? I stupidly called it Bud and the dog whose name I forgot because I forgot what he told me. But I guess that's not an appropriate title for this picture because it is merely a photo of a plaid shirt and I guess a white collar because collars are dog clothing, okay? If I want to call this photo Bud and his dog, I got to display it in black and white. There we go. Now it's officially about the subject and not his outerwear. But what do we even know about how souls and film even work together? Like, can a, can a soul be captured on color medium? Like, if I, if I desaturate this to black and white, is the soul even present? Because I had the audacity to not even shoot it in black and white originally. Or the soul sitting there going like, Oh dear, no, this photographer, he's got, he's got color film in his camera. Let's just, let's just back away quietly and let him take a picture of this clothes. This is, I don't want to be in this. Uh, uh. What's, what's, what's the nature of souls? Does a, does a digital sensor capture the soul? Cause that's just like running all the color stuff through a filter. It's not even like black and white film. Does the soul be like, yay, I'm getting captured. Then like hit the CCD and be like, and gets electrocuted out if the black and white filter's on. And like, does that soul die? What happens to the soul? How many souls are we killing shooting people in color? This, this is, this is madness, I tell you. And like, can you, how do, how do we measure the soul in the photo? Like, as a human viewer, if you looked at my picture that was desaturated, I didn't tell you, could you be like, oh yes, there's definitely no soul in here. You cheated. You did not visualize this photo in black and white. What is wrong with you? Why are you showing me pictures of clothing? <sighs> and then and the next person comes by and goes to some other photographer's photo that's shot natively in black and white of a person and just like, feel the soul in there. This is, this is everything. Like how can we, how can we measure our prints to know if there's actually souls in the damn photo? Or maybe, oh my god, what if you shoot someone in color, it actually does capture the soul, but now the soul is trapped in that photo, unable to be seen because it's in color and about the clothes, not the soul. So like in every color portrait, there's just a poor soul like in the background. It's like in the witches, when the witches put that girl in the painting and she lived out her life in the feeding like goose in the painting and just getting old and dying. Like every color portrait I've ever shot has a poor soul in it just growing old and dying because I didn't use black and white the cow. <laughs> so, so hopefully the, the knowing soul can read the photographer's intentions and get out of that hell scenario if they're shooting in color. And, and then, like, has anyone tested if souls can be affected by diffraction? I go and I shoot what, too small of an f-stop and like, I just get a dirty, bent up, uh, painfully twisted uh, or hurt soul in my photo because it really needs f8, the perfect aperture to slide through and get into the picture. Has anyone done this science? I'm worried about these souls out there. What about the digichromatography process? Do you know what this is? This, this, this is like old, old school color where you take three pictures of the same scene on black and white and you put a different color filter in each one and then you shoot those three colors back onto a screen and you get a color photograph. Is this saying that if you shoot three separate souls with different filters and then mash them all together, the poor soul just, just thrives in pain and uh, turns into a shirt. Like, 
what happens? How does, how does this work? How does three separate black and white soul-filled images become a shirt? So, so does like each, each color channel, like where they overlap, represent a different part of the outfit? So if I take the, the red channel and the green channel and where they overlap, we get the yellow channel. Does that just like represent a shirt? If I do a two color digitogamrager photography process of just the yellow and green, do I get this weird, weird soul that's like only like a Donald Duck soul where it's wearing a shirt and then its soul is just flopping out because there's no other channel to make the pants? What? This is, this is madness. I, I, I demand, I demand some good scientist at ye old camera factory to get some heads in this, do some studies, because I think, I think we are out there ruining the lives of souls based on this Ted Grant quote. When you photograph people in black and white, you photograph their souls. Oh, I'm shaking. Please subscribe for more dumb photography stuff like this.